Welcome to lesson number four. This lesson we are talking about triple points, which I call the go right here of storm chasing. If X marks the spot, a triple point certainly is that in storm chasing. So if you are ever curious about how to target or, you know, as a beginner or even an intermediate watching this course, you're wondering where to go, triple points are always just a really good option. Now, again, the disclaimer, Now again, the disclaimer. Again, you know, storm chasing is dangerous. This is not meant to be a guide to replace training. This is just meant to be a supplement and more of a hands-on guide to storm chasing. Not really a uh, heavy and deep into meteorology guide, but more along the lines of just chase strategy. Okay, so let's get to it. Triple points, go right here. If you're ever in doubt, just I'm just letting you know the triple point it is the easiest it is the most default target of storm chasing uh, most people you know they live and die by this thing uh, there's a lot of people out there that do and honestly triple points are a very easy target to pick why you know if ever in doubt there's going to be storms at the triple point I mean if there's going to be storms south along the dry line almost certainly there's going to be storms at the triple point as well so if there is a triple point set up uh, it's just a really easy, you know, it's an easy decision uh, in that regard if you're in doubt. Lift convergence is maximized here, uh, as is low level shear. Uh, vorticity is maximized here uh, with a deepening surface low or something like that. I mean, you can get Tornado City in these things for sure, you know, just multiple storms producing big weather. Triple points are notorious big weather producers. So, you know, triple points, it all seems too good to be true, doesn't it? Like, what is the catch here? Because there's got to be a catch. Everything seems so good. Well, why not triple points? There has to be a reason, right? There has to be. Uh, two reasons, in my opinion, that you should avoid triple points. Big reason number one, there are going to be days where there are just simply too many storms. You will have HP modes. There will be too much competition between cells. This will limit the severe threat and will definitely limit your ability to chase and get good visuals on the severe threat ongoing. So... A triple point, it's great, but if there is any weakness in the cap whatsoever, if the lift is strong, etc., 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 you will find yourself very peeved by HP storm modes. The second big reason, in my opinion, is that there's simply going to be more photogenic storms on the dry line further south, if that is an option, or there may simply be more prolific storms further east along a warm front. You know, triple points, they will, you will see a lot of tornadoes and such along these but sometimes uh you just get two crowded storm modes within the triple point and further east there'll be a lone supercell riding the warm front just doing crazy things so it's one of those things where if you really get when you really get down to it you have to be careful uh not you know you, the triple point isn't always going to produce i guess the best way to put it sometimes other areas do uh for instance we're going to look at this one again may 19 2010 the triple point ended up, you know, out here by Tologa, Clinton, etc. And, you know, you had the warm front which arced back east and south from there. And what happened is you had storms form along this warm front. They got uh, just east of the triple point. Things got really crowded. They did produce tornadoes. But these were not the most photogenic storms or tornadoes of the day. What happened on this day, while there were tornadoes, etc., etc., and people are very proud of those, people who were further south along the dry line which ended up somewhere along through here, uh, you saw that you saw a really good supercell form and track toward Winniewood, had beautiful structure, produced a very visible multi-vortex tornado. There was no problems with rain or anything like that. So, you know, you had that going on. Another thing is, uh, you know, you had multiple storms form east along the warm front on this day, and, you know, you had the eastern one, and you had ones back west, and things were just crowded in HP. And there were a lot of storm chasers as well along the warm front and triple points. So you got to watch that. But a few things that I look for on a good triple point target are, is, that, is the cap so strong that there's not going to be storms down here? I am a dry line chaser. I will admit that. I have full disclosure. So if, say, down here was going to go, that's where I'm going. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of people up here anyways. 
Matt's well covered, and there's just not much of a reason to stick to the triple point. However, the triple point on a lot of days is going to be dynamite. And the reason why I may target the triple point, though, is that winds are only backing in this corridor right here, you know, just east and south of the low. And at back here, they're veered a little bit more south, southwest, or something like that. In that case, yeah, you want to. But the triple point is something that you just, you know, you, you, you got to be careful with it. But it is an obvious chase target a lot of times. Some words of wisdom. You know, targeting decisions, they're rarely cut and dry. And, and I say that to then say this. If sheer and instability, they happen to be maximized, coincident with a triple point. You know, they're, they're, those two things are really maximized on top of a triple point, And you don't see that storms are going to become too numerous. Triple points are the obvious target. Uh, you, you, you should just go there. I mean, seriously, the, the, your work's done, short storm chasing, targeting, it's that easy in that regard. Uh, chaser convergence, though, will be highest around triple points uh, because it is that obvious, and there will be less crowded roads and other targets. So if you don't want to share the road with 500 other storm chasers, a triple point's not going to be where you want to be a lot of days. Simple as that. Uh, Another very important note, uh, we talked about the dry line in the last lesson. I didn't talk about this enough, but you need to be you know, on a dry line. You know, you can arrive a little later. Storms will probably not go from blue sky to tornado very quickly with just a dry line. Uh, the reason for that is, is storms typically will form in drier air and bases will have to lower. A storm will have to gather some strength. It takes a little bit for a dry line storm to get cranking. On the other hand, with the triple point storm you can get these things go up and produce tornadoes very very quickly and they're also going to form earlier in the day on average versus dry line so you know your first storms of the day will almost always be along a triple point the amount of times i set south on a dry line watching a tornado warning 100 miles to my northwest is innumerable at this point so uh, if you're going to chase a triple point you want to make sure that you arrive earlier in the day. You want to be there, you know, on a typical severe weather day, noon to two is when you want to be at a triple point. I mean, uh, if you're going to get storm formation at three or four, you want to be there a little early just because things can happen a little earlier than expected along a triple point. So with that said, that's a triple point. So I hope this, uh, this guide really kind of clarified triple point dry line a little bit and contrast it with the last lesson. We're going to look at warm fronts, and then we're going to look at targeting for movement, and which is going to tie all this together. And then that'll be this course. So look forward to seeing you back here. We'll see you next time.